Welcome back to Homecoming. I'm Rick Riley. We're at Wake Forest University with one of the most thrilling young players to come into the NBA in a long time in Chris Paul. Now, we like to learn a lot of things about our guests on Homecoming. In fact, we kind of sometimes are a little too nosy. What you mean? So we want to ask you a, a question that maybe we shouldn't ask, but... Well, why are you going to ask? What? <laughs> because you got no choice. Uh, what part of your body would you most like to change? Oh, man. Probably my legs. What's wrong with your legs? I like them to be longer. <laughs> Pause. Well, let's see what your friends and family said you'd like to change. <laughs> I think he'd want to be taller. I think he'd probably like to have longer legs. I would say his size. His height part of your body? <laughs> Maybe his unibrow. I think so. His eyebrows. That's what he would change, because he will cut it in a heartbeat, and I always say something to him about cutting it. Everybody doesn't get that, so he shouldn't cut it. <laughs> They're on you about your eyebrows. Wow, <laughs> put me on blast. <laughs> wow. You know what, though? I'm going to tell you the truth. My grandma, I tell him, Granny. Granny told me when uh, she used to tell me about my unibrow, she said that that meant I was going to be rich. <laughs> You better, better, start, better start praying for a unibrow. <laughs> Lord, yeah. Yeah. I'm going to try to make mine grow together. <laughs> That's great. You go pro after two years here. Uh, you were going to be a favorite to win the national title, but you go pro. You sign for millions. Is it a dumb question to ask why? No, it's not a dumb question. Not a dumb question, because when I set out to come to Wake Forest, my goal was to go to school, get a great education, graduate, and hope to someday play in the NBA. You know, when it just, the NBA came first. So you do go on to the NBA after that. You're taken by New Orleans <laughs> in the fourth pick. Now, New Orleans was really just putrid the year before. They had won 18 <laughs> games, right? It was a very tough year. 18 to 64. That's right. What were you thinking? Please don't draft me. Please don't draft me. No, I'm, I'm just kidding. Oh, man. Um, um, unbelievable. Unbelievable. I don't think it could have been a better fit. Well, before you get down there, the draft is in June. On August 29th, Katrina hits New Orleans and devastates it. Where are you when you realize this home that you're about to move to is being flattened? I was home, thankfully. I was home here in, uh, in Winston, still staying at my parents' house. And I remember it. I remember it. We had just came from New Orleans a week or two before because we had just found my house. I was so excited. You know, I was going to actually have my own house. We uh, got a chance to finish picking out everything in the house. And the storm hits. And I'm, I'm like, what now? Wow. What now? So it rips the roof off the Superdome. It also rips the roof off New Orleans Arena, which is where the Hornets play. All of a sudden, the whole team is being transferred to Oklahoma City. Ever been to Oklahoma City in your life to that point? No. How'd no. you like it? I couldn't. Eat, I probably wouldn't have been able to tell you where it was on the map. <laughs> you know, but uh, it actually being a uh, blessing. Start. It, 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 it turned out to be a blessing in disguise. You know, we went to Oklahoma City, and I tell you, those fans there, they didn't know us. They didn't know us. We were just an NBA team coming in, and they supported us and treated us like we've been there for years. Well, we do have your coach here, Byron Scott, three-time world champion with the Los Angeles Lakers. Byron, great to have you. You were a guard. What could Chris do that you could never do? Uh, a little bit of everything. Uh, I think the only thing I really had on him at that particular time was that I could shoot the ball a little bit better. Probably better hops, maybe a little quicker. Hey, but, now. Uh, <laughs> faster. No, well, you know what? The thing that I loved about Chris when we brought him in and we worked him out, uh, even before we worked him out, I met him for lunch, and he had these big old eyes when I, when I walked up to him, and the first thing he said to me was, oh, you're a lot taller than I thought you were. Uh, we sat down and had a great lunch, and we went and worked out. He had a fantastic workout. Uh, I remember telling my general manager and another Wake Forest alumnus, uh, Gil yeah, McGregor, McGregor. Uh, I said, we have no shot. Have no shot at getting this kid. I said, he's the best player in the draft. I said, we, we, won't, we, we just won't get him. Not at four. I said, we might get somebody close to that, but I said, we won't get Chris Paul. You know, luckily for us, he uh, slipped down to us. And uh, so I knew for a fact that, you know, he had been through all the stuff that he had been through as a youngster, that he would be very effective in the NBA. 
In fact, you made a pretty big prediction, you remember? Yes, I did. Uh, when we drafted Chris Paul and we got him to training camp in Oklahoma City, the first thing I told the reporters is that he will be rookie of the year. He's the best player in the draft. And how'd that work out? Well, he won rookie of the year. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> in fact, you won 124 out of 125 first place votes. Yeah. And what'd you do with the trophy? It's sitting at my house. Like when you walk into my living room, it's the Rookie of the Year trophy along with the Rookie of the Month trophies. So when we return on homecoming, the Hornets move back to New Orleans and Chris Paul does something very few athletes in the history of sport have ever done. But first, when you were here, did you ever go listen to the Wake Forest Gospel Choir? Definitely, definitely. Because they're here for you tonight. They've prepared something just for you. So hit it. <laughs> <laughs> 